good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on your time of day or your time of season. So, you want to go to a mill sim. You want to go to the Townsville mill sim, run by Adrenaline. Well, guess what? I'm here to help you out. We're going to be running over. A pack set up, how to pack it, what to take in it, at the bare minimum of what you will need versus what you will want. As well, I will be covering clothing and different theories and methods of clothing and what you what would be helpful to have in your clothing. And giving some tips and tricks of uh, what works for me. Keep in mind what worked for me may not or definitely will not work for you. So you'll have to experiment with your own um, resources. Um, but if you test, if you try what I do, what works for me, it might work for you. If it works for you, saves you a lot of time, saves you a little bit of money. Uh, and that's, a, that's an all round. I see that as an absolute win. So, starting off, we're going to go with clothing. Now, let's start with your feet. Because you, I know some of you fuckers are into that shit and that's weird. Kink shaming is my kink. Um, boots. You want a really, really good pair of boots because you're going to be on your feet a fair bit. Um, even if it's only 24 hours and you're just chilling at base, you'll probably be standing if you're an, if you're an idiot and don't bring a chair or a milk crate or something to sit on, um, like me. Or if you're out doing patrols, whatnot. Uh, I have a dedicated pair of boots for gel ball as a whole. These are... I don't even fucking know what these are. God, I wish I could fucking read. Um, these are just some cadet boots that I bought off cadet shop for 130 bucks. Uh, they've lasted me well. The laces broke in the first week I have them because I really... I really fucking, you know, spread them. I really tighten those bitches up. Uh, so I just have rope. I literally have rope. Not lacing, just rope. Uh, these have lasted me for a year now. Two years. I had a pair of these before that lasted me six years. Um, these are a bit too big for me. Uh, get something with a... I really like ankle support, so I go with like the higher, the higher cut boots. As well as a good sole. Uh, these are a little bit water resistant. Um, when it gets to like these parts here, water likes to seep in, but it's very rare. I haven't treated these with any water resistant stuff. I recommend you do that. Get a good pair of boots. Solomon's are a good option. Uh, Ridgeline is a really good option. I'm getting a set of Ridgelines when these die, or when I want to retire these, I'll get a set. Of, I'm getting a set of Ridgelines. Anyway, that's the point. Get a good pair of boots. You'll need them. Socks. I have two pairs of socks that I wear at one time. As I said, uh, those boots are a bit bigger for me. I wear, a, uh, I bring four, I'm bringing four sets of these socks, maybe three um, for the game. And I'll change these out uh, instead of the, having just these. I'll change my internal socks out because they just give me that padding. They, they make my foot a bit schwoll in terms. Uh, I have these wool socks. They're very, they're like um, bamboo wool. Bamboo socks are nice. The problem I have with bamboo socks is they um, they take a really, pardon me, really long time to dry. Obviously it's a Milsim event, a 24 hour Milsim event, so that doesn't matter. I uh, just bring more socks. Um, change your socks as often as you can. I'm going to be changing my socks every eight hours. If I get wet, I'm changing my socks. Um, because we're building, living, kind of living out of a base or a fob, whatever you want to call it, uh, we're going to have a lot of downtime. Especially if you're the defending team, you're going to have a lot of time to chill out, except for when you get raided and whatnot. Uh, but change your socks as soon as you can. Moving up from that, jocks, underwear, scoonies, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I wear two pairs, 
uh, because I sweat a lot and I get a lot of chafing. So I wear like your standard uh, um, rectangle jocks, tradies. I really like tradies. I wear a set of them and I wear a pair of skins. These bad boys stop chafing. I love these are lifesavers. Everything feels comfy. Um, it holds everything tight. It's not like restricting. I thought it was going to be restricting when I tried it. A mate offered. A mate was like, "Do this thing," and I'm like, "All right." Uh, skins are good. Um, you can wear skins on their own. I like wearing them with jocks. It just um, it makes the skins last a bit longer. But um, I'm probably just going to wear skins for this event. Moving up from that, an undershirt. I um, I love undershirts. Undershirts are pretty hit and miss. I don't even know what this is made out of. I think it's cotton. Cotton's really good at wicking. Wicking sweat off your body. Highly recommend a cotton undershirt if it's hot. Um, although it will get a bit wet and stinky. So, yeah, if you for the event, a cotton undershirt will be fine. Uh, if it also gets cold, it'll keep you a little bit warmer because it'll trap some heat in. Uh, you really can't go wrong with an undershirt. I've worn undershirts at like 38 degree heat and they've done me fine. Yeah, it was hot, but that's, you know, it's Australia. Everything's fucking hot. Everything catches fire. Moving up from that, or well, back down, we're going to be uh, the pants. Obviously, you can see these are a multi-cam. Uh, discuss Don't worry about the camera. The camera's fucking pointless in terms of what we're talking about. We're talking about how to run your pants setup in a way. In my, what is this? My right pocket, my right thigh pocket, I have a notepad. I have three pens, I had four, but I lost one, but that's why I have four pens, because you'll lose pens. Um, in, I have a notepad in this cover. It's your fucking pretty typical like defense ADF pads, cadet pad, notepads. You can find these, cases and the notepad on cadet shop check them out they're really good i really like this shit up on the ass pocket i normally keep that empty probably put my wallet in there you shouldn't have your wallet or your phone on the field um i recommend you lock it somewhere or hide it somewhere where only you know i'm not just don't take them on the field until you lose shit um especially if it's in one of these pockets moving over to my left side my left thigh pocket, I have a boonie. Boonies fuck. Boonies are based. Uh, get a boonie. Get a nice one. Uh, this one has a bunch of holes cut in the top. Uh, this was a makeshift ghillie, ghillie hat. Um, but I got bored of being a... Like, it just... It, I got sick of it. I wanted to, I wanted to embrace boonie. Reject ghillie. So... It's got a bunch of holes in it. If I wanted to, I could tie um, uh, foliage to the top of the hat. Uh, as well, I also have a scrim. Scrims, fuck. Scrims are awesome. You could be laying down in an ambush position, ambush position, watch a road, and you could be running this bad boy, old Betsy. You'd be laying there in the prone. You just throw this shit over you. So that it covers your gat and your head and it breaks up the signature of a gun. Especially if you add uh, foliage to your equipment and yourself. It's just, it's really on um, quick and easy camouflage and concealment. Uh, that does, it's super lightweight. Um, it can keep you warm when it's cold. It can, it can do a lot of things, man. Scrims fuck. Scrims are based. Get a scrim. Get it at True Blue if you're um, if you're in the local area of one, or you can find them on Cadet Shop again. You'll you'll come to find that I love Cadet Shop. In my ass pocket, I have a a um a head sock or balaclava or something. I normally have a multicam one, but this is my backup. This is going to sit in my back pocket. Uh, it's for wiping my glasses when they fog up. Um, as well, another thing, when uh, touching on pants, get one that fits, obviously, pretty self-explanatory. 
Get one that fits and that is comfy and that is going to stretch with you. Uh, because when you start maneuvering, like peeking around corners and crouching and crawling, it's going to get ripped up. If it's tight in the crutch, it's going to fucking rip. Um, what's another thing? Get ones that are adjustable at the ankles. So you can do blousing. Um, basically what blousing is, is you roll this up into your sock, around your boot. And your sock will hold it there. It stops critters from getting in under, like ticks and shit, getting up in, in your legs and grabbing onto your taint and feeding off your taint. That's very uncomfortable. It's not a vibe. Um, try to avoid... <clears throat> as much Velcro as possible. Obviously, this is one that I bought at M4. Uh, so, everything's fucking Velcro. But Velcro is annoying. Mother Nature's a greedy bitch. And she will rip anything that's Velcro off of your uniform. Off of you. Moving on. Moving up to the torso. We have a uh, multicam battle top. Uh, I really, really like this. This material right here, super stretchy, super breathable. Uh, it really lets water out. It's really, it, it doesn't trap heat in as much as you'd think. It's very nice, very low profile, lightweight, cooling material. It's stretchy, so it stretches if you've got a bit of a belly. It will stretch to your belly without like stripping. Uh, in my right uh, shoulder pocket, I've got my iPro. Um, this is what I will be wearing. So as soon as I put this on, when I get to the event, throw these bad boys on. Uh, it's just so that they're there. Uh, it's more reason to not forget my uniform. Because <laughs> you can't play without your, you know, your, uh, your nerd goggles. As well, on that pocket, I have this, uh, red balaclava. Or band, sorry, bandana. Uh, this is my dead rag. When I'm dead, I get shot in the face, I get shit on, I'm just... Whoop. Whoop. Hola, niño. I'm here to drop off some muffins. Then I get eaten by a wolf. Uh, these um, Velcro pockets on the shoulders are really good for uh, storing trash and notepads and shit like that. They're really good to have. On my left pocket, I have a map, map, po map uh, cover, map sleeve. Uh, it's good to have some nav. Just any nav is better than no nav. Uh, it's just a waterproof sleeve that I can slot a map in. Uh, and I can draw on this and I can wrap this up and have pens inside of it. Very nice. Get. It's just a demonstration to show navigation equipment. I would keep that on my person. Or if it was in my rig, I'd have it tied to my rig. But uh, definitely consider uh, navigation. Although, because we're playing at a fenced-in area, don't really need nav. The rule of thumb is, if you hit a fence, do a 180 and come back. Going on to more protective equipment, gloves. Uh, Mother Nature's a greedy bitch, as I said before, and she will stab you. Repeatedly. Everywhere. Obviously, if you get stabbed, what your first reaction is going to be... I don't like getting stabbed. So you're going to grab it with your hand and throw it the fuck away. Get some gloves. Get some nice thick gloves. Made of mine uh, with um, a special group of individuals. Gave me these. Um, you're a legend if you're watching this. Uh, they're uh, Mechanics Impact gloves, I think. Yeah, legit Mechanics gloves. I think the individual pay like 60 bucks for these, which is a bit extreme for a pair of gloves. But uh, it's just a demo. Get a pair of gloves. Uh, if you need a, re if you are touching your phone, just take your glove off or cut the fingertip off. Get some gloves. Moving on to the pouch setup. To the claymore pouch or the head pouch, I have two pairs of socks. Uh, this is where I keep my socks, as well as meds. Uh, this is my boo boo kit or my uh. Mummy kiss my kiss my saw kit. I got bandages. I have a bandage, a sh spare tampons. Cause I mean, a lady 
ladies might lose their shit, and they might need a tampon. So you, you be a gentleman and keep one on hand. As well as you get punched in the face, you can put a tampon in your nose and stop the nosebleed. Doesn't hurt to be prepared. Adapt, overcome, and improvise. I also have band-aids, duct tape, uh, athlete's tape, more athlete's tape, a spare headlamp, pour pour cream, and salvon. Uh, that, that will help you with any cuts. Um, if you get a, a pretty bad cut, um, the game staff will have shit on hand. Top of the claymore pouch, meds and spare socks. Things you want to get to quickly if you need them. Headlamp is good to have at the top of there as well. Moving down. Uh, carabine packs. Uh, you'll often find in like hiking packs and rucksacks. They have a drawstring with this uh, water, highly water resistant material at the top. Because obviously gravity goes down just like uh, the fucks your parents probably give about you, uh, they're probably going down as well. For legal reasons, that's a joke. If you're feeling suicidal, um, go contact Suicide Hotline, please. Get some help. People care about you, and they want to see you succeed. First thing I have on top of my pack, fucking air guard. Because fuck mosquitoes and fuck bugs to the moon, they can go fuck themselves. We also have Hunger Buster. This one's uh, beef casserole. Beef casserole's bay. Um, I don't recommend taking an entire um, ration pack. Just take all the good contents out of it, the snack stuff, and maybe a main meal. Because at this event, uh, in October, there is going to be breakfast and dinner provided for us. Um, so I don't really need to take a big meal or cooking even. You don't need to take cooking. Now, uh, after reading into the rule set a bit more, um, there was, I think there was a change or I just didn't read them properly the first time. Uh, it is actually a bring your own food event. There's no food supplied. So I actually recommend getting an entire wrap pack. Uh, it comes with breakfast, comes with dinner, bunch of snacks in between. Um, wouldn't hurt to bring a little extra, such as protein bars or muesli bars. So, definitely, um, yeah, uh, either go to Woolies or something and get an entire set of food, or the hiking packs, which are a bit expensive, or you could go to Cadet Shop and get uh, these MREs. So, I highly recommend doing that. Um, jam down the side of this pack is um, a sweater. This is representative of warm weather gear. Take something that's going to keep you warm, because if it gets wet, like, the, if it rains, you get wet, whatever's wet is cold, cold is wet, fuck both of them, they both suck, um, it might get cold at night, so throw, throw, your, throw an OG sweater on. If you don't know what colour to get it in, if you can't find camo, get it in, uh, natural greens and browns. Try to avoid khaki, um, sorry not khaki, like coyote brown. Get like a more neutral, neutral tan or neutral green or a combination of the both. Um, those work really well. This is like an olive green, as you can see. That shit's bossing. As well in this main compartment, I have the stuff I'm going to get to the least often, which is my sleeping bag. This is a carabine, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a zero degree rated sleeping bag. Uh, I really like it, it's really good, it's lasted me a very, very long time, I take this to camp out and whatnot. Uh, it's also in a, it comes with a stuff sack, uh, which is really, really good for stuff like this. As you can see, this alone takes up a lot of room in this pack. And that's with it cinched all the way down. So get a cinch kit. Uh, it's very good. Uh, this will keep me warm no matter what time it is. If it gets hotter, uh, I can just unzip it and like flip my leg out and like have less clothing on and whatnot. There's ways around heat, uh, but there's no way around cold. So get something that's cold, cold resistant, especially now being winter. 
Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, always have a sleeping bag, but never have a sleeping bag by itself. We'll get to that later. Now is later. So this is a insulated mat. It folds out. This is a, a H, a Hus, Hus, H-U-S-S, uh, NATO spec, uh, insulated sleeping pad. There, it was like 40 bucks from Cadet Shop. Uh, you can cut these down. You don't need the full pad. You can cut them down to save some weight. They fold out really well when it wants to fold out. You fold it out. Um, I'm probably not going to, I don't cut them down, but you can cut them down. But I will normally jam this inside of my um, sleeping bag and sleep on top of it. As I've said before, and I'll say it again, Mother Nature is a greedy bitch, and she will take all the heat from your body and fuck you with the cold. Get a sleeping mat. Keeps, reflects the heat off your body, from the ground, back into your body. Keeps you nice and warm. And it also adds a bit of padding, because sleeping on rocks ain't, ain't potters. At the very, very bottom of the pack, just here, um, is a spare uniform. Or clothing. I have a jelly bean uh, camo. It, it's yeah, just a spare set of pants because pants can rip even if you get properly sized ones, and a spare shirt for the next day of the morning. Because if it gets wet, you change it. Um, you're gonna sweat a lot, so change it. Obviously, make them last. Uh, and I have it packed at the bottom, that way it's more likely to stay dry if it rains. You would put your most water resistant stuff at the top of the pack, and your stuff you need to keep the dry the most at the bottom. Uh, that's with this main compartment anyway. Some people get these rain pack covers, I've got one, we'll get to that later. So, now that we've covered the top section of the pack, which is like, sustain, kind of sustainment shut, um, Sleeping, food, spare clothing, stuff of that nature. Uh, we're going to move to the bottom section of the pack. But before we get there, in these little, these two side elastic bottle pouches, they can fit a 32 ounce Nalgene bottle. But if you're going to put a bottle in there, I recommend you find a way to uh, attach a lanyard to it. So that, I mean, as you see, there's a lot of molly real estate. You can molly whatever the fuck you want. Um, I would recommend tying something to the molly to a water bottle. If you're going to put a water bottle in here. I don't trust them. That's just the thing I've always done. But, uh, in one of the pouches I have this little bag. This is my pack cover. Uh, it's waterproof. It's in AMCU, which is quite hard to get. Uh, that's why I have a lot of TPCU stuff, but this goes over my pack, like so. You can, you can get ones that are like, one side's woodland for like, winter, ah, uh, for like, summer, and then the other side's like a drier colour. Um, so you get like, multi-seasonal camouflage that you just flip inside out. Sometimes you can get ones with a high-vis orange, and the other side's a camo. Uh, I recommend getting one of those, because... If you get in trouble, you can flip it inside out and like signal for help. Um, but I have this AMCU one to keep everything dry for when it rains. It's easy to get to. If shit is really fucked and I need it for like a survival situation, I can use it to collect water from when it rains. But that's a really bad day. And I hope I never get to that point in life. And I have this uh, bungee attached to the loop of the little case it comes in so that it, it it's not going anywhere and I just have that jammed in there. I have that quick and easy to get to because when it starts raining I really don't want to get my stuff wet especially if I've got GoPros and shit so definitely get a pack cover, highly recommend it. Moving into the bottom of the rucksack to get everything smaller, I really cinch them down. 
and it really compresses the bottom of the pack. Or what you can do, I'm going to use my jumper as a demo, is you can roll something up and jam it under here. So a sleeping mat, you could use this method for a sleeping mat, this is what a lot of people do, for like a yoga mat or something. Um, I don't like doing that however, I, rather, I like having everything in the pack, that way it's protected. Let's unzip this bad boy and get to it. Now, I have a Viper Hood as the first thing I can get to. So my theory behind this is, or well, the way I've used it is, when we get to set up our base, then we'd set up our sleeping, which obviously this is housing all of that. So you'd set up your shelter, which is a hoochie, which for basic terms is a glorified tarp uh, in this little case, this little thing. You get these from True Brew for like 30 bucks. Uh, they're really good. Um, you can make shelters, you make shelters with them. You can make a hammock. I don't know how to do it though. I wouldn't trust it. Um, you can make naval vessels with them, like little rafts and shit. You just wrap it around your pack multiple packs and then it floats because it's somewhat water resistant and you swim behind it uh, if you really need to cross the river um yes uh get a get a hoochie um another method that you can do that my mate has done before is he's we've combined out hoochies or he had a poncho we've combined it at my hoochie his poncho we made like a, a little tent that was like two meters off the ground. He set up a hammock under his, and I set up a little stretcher on the ground, and that did us fine. It was like a, it was like a bunk bed in the jungle. It was great, good times. But hoochies are good. Uh, they're pretty standardized in terms of sizing. You can get longer ones, but you can clip them together to make hoochieville, uh, which is like fifty hoochies combined to make one giant tent, pretty much. Um, they're lightweight, they're super, super versatile, you can use them anywhere. One problem with hoochies is you do need trees to set them up. You can't, they're not a self-standing system. But if you bring um, poles, you could probably set this up um, without trees. So, to, co to accommodate the hoochie, we have tent pegs. We have a, sh I have a shit ton, they're all like, rubber, um, hair tied together. You never have too many tent pegs. Get, get a good get a lot of temp eggs. I recommend getting long ones as well as uh, bigger ones with these these massive hooks. These ones are really really good. I wish I had some longer ones. Um, I normally just stomp them into the ground with my boot. You see a lot of people take like a hammer or whatever. I just stomp them into the ground. To accommodate that we have rope. For I got rope to help tie this up as well as hang my pack from a tree which I would never do, but if I wanted to hang something from a tree or set up an ambush or cut some rope up to give to a mate, I could. Have a lot of rope, it's really good. Um, another method you can do with setting up the hoochie is uh, bungee, uh, bungee hooks. Those are really good. Um, you can just bungee them around the tree. They're elastic so it stretches. Uh, I am yet to get some for that. Uh, another thing I have in here is my cooking supplies. In this uh, pocket that I, I had off, uh, I cut off an old set of uniform that broke. In here, I have a pan set messing with this cord around it to keep it stealthy. Uh, you have a big pan, a small pan. Inside of this is a hexi stove. You use for hexi mine. God, I hate that sound. This one's pretty old. Ow. Hexi stove. Old fashioned shit right there. No jet boils here. We have boomers. As well as in here, we have my KFS. My knife, fork, and spoon. It's a neat little set. You can get these at any camping store, pretty much. Um, it's just the basics for food. You can get all of this stuff at Cadet Shop as well, in terms of the pan set messing, the KFS, uh, the hoochies, the rope, all that stuff. In this pack, I have a couple tabs of Hexi Mine. 
in like six different layers of uh, sandwich bags because that shit is poisonous as fuck because uh, it's literally condensed fuel and if you eat it you will die uh, so safety precautions that's all I have in the bottom of here another thing I would have in the bottom of here is baby wipes and toiletry stuff highly recommend it you need water. I reckon, highly recommend taking water. Um, I would personally molly a camelback to the outside that can clip to and be independent. You might notice I don't have any water weather, wet weather gear. Um, that's in my salt pack. So this is a carabine little, uh, little day pack, little camelback. I really like this thing. Um, it has two compartments, a main compartment, and then a little external compartment. My external compartment has a poncho, uh, it's just, it's a standard, it's a fucking old fashioned standard poncho, nothing special. Um, if I wasn't bringing the assault pack, that would be in this bottom compartment, in this bottom compartment here with everything else. That's where this poncho would live. I'd also keep snacks in here. It's got room, little phone, another phone, pens, notepad, whatever. That can go in here. This main portion, um, so I'm a machine gunner. I'm running a 249 and I, my section or my squad is also running another 249. So we have two machine guns in a section as well as a couple rifles spread between us. Uh, one of them is HBA. So, I think we have a one speed loader rule. We only get to use one speed loader per life. Uh, so I'm bringing one speed loader for the whole section because I'm a homie like that. Uh, that's gonna live in here. I can also, I'm also gonna be carrying a three liter camelback just straight down the slot here with a hose running out of the hole at the top here, straight down the sleeve, as well as a bunch of extra water bottles for the homies, because you gotta look out for the homies. This little boo-boo kit is also gonna live in here as well. It's gonna live just here. It's just gonna sit in there. I'm not gonna zip it up, but it, it's literally just gonna sit in there. That way, if I really need it, I just unzip it, rip it open, pull it out, and it's there. Um, You don't need to have a, like, camo stuff. Like, as you see, all of this is camo because I literally only use it for milsims and the occasional camping trip. Um, you can uh, avoid camo, like getting DPCU or multicam or whatever. I recommend it if you're doing it for milsim. Uh, but you don't need camo because there's no uniform restrictions when it comes to these milsims yet. Um, you might see that I don't have any reviving because there's no reviving, there's only a spawn point. Uh, you might see that I lack a lot of water. So as you've seen, the assault pack is carrying three liters um, for myself, as well as about a liter, two liters in different water bottles for everybody else in my squad. They will also have their own water, hopefully. Um, my chest rig, I highly recommend you have water on your chest rig on you at all times. A minimum of two to three liters. You can cheap out on some of this kit, just do not cheap out on wet weather gear, warm, uh, cold weather gear, uh, sleeping, and the hoochie is as cheap as you really can go. Uh, you can, I don't recommend taking a tent, it's just too heavy, it's too bulky. We have to carry all of this to our spawn point. Uh, which is why I have it in a rucksack. You could ditch the rucksack altogether and just go with a duffel bag. A duffel bag will work fine. Uh, you just got to carry it as well as your guns and ammo, uh, which can get really annoying. But I highly recommend these rucksacks. I paid about a hundred bucks for the rucksack. The most expensive item out of everything here is a sleeping bag. This sleeping bag was about 200 bucks alone, but it's a really good sleeping bag. It comes with a cinch kit, it's zero degree rated, it's comfy, it's got a fair bit of padding. Uh, it's, it's a good, I really like the sleeping bag.
Um, now that I've showed you everything in the pack, I'm going to show you how to pack it and optimize an assault pack with a rucksack. So, let's zip this up and get all this packed away real quick. Now do remember, I would not put the poncho in the main compartment, it would be here. I like to pack from the bottom, work my way up. So this, I put my cooking and hygiene items, my shelter, complimentaries for the shelter, and that extra thing that you don't need. Moving up the main compartment, we'll get the uniform, jam, just jam the uniform straight in there, don't even need to fold it, jam it and pat it down, then you would grab your sleeping mat, jam it in the back, I, I jam it in the back so that's flat against the uh, plastic internal frame, internal frame of the pack, um, that way it acts as a secondary frame. Because when you really pack your pack and cinch it down, it likes to bulge. Uh, it likes to bulge on the inside just here. So wrap around. It's really uncomfortable. So I have the sleeping mat as a frame. Then get your sleeping bag in. Make sure it's all the way down there. And I like to push it to the side. I then grab my cold weather gear. Jam it in the empty space in the side of the pack and can push it down as far as I can. Then grab your, your food, put that on top. Arrow guard, wham. Now, you pull the drawstring, drawstring it all the way down. You'll have all this extra drawstring. I like to get this part and roll it up, like so. And then you use this buckle to hold it in place and then you cinch that down and then you just kind of push it into the folds that way it's neat. Grab your flap, flap it over, extend these cinches, open this up, put your socks in there, put your meds in there, zip this back up. Cinch this down. Now for attaching the assault pack. I'm super paranoid and I really don't want to lose this pack. So I use the side strap to cinch the sides down. Clip that up. I run this strap underneath it. And then I attach this strap. Uh, I don't need to do that with the other half, attach it there. Now make sure you have some tongues to pull on, you'll need about an inch, inch and a half. Now that this is done up, you just cinch down. Now that is an entire pack setup you'll ever need for 24 hours for a milsim. Now, I highly recommend you save weight in any way you can, whether that be um, if you find a lighter alternative to any of those things, I highly recommend taking it. Um, as well, I will. I recommend getting the 75 litre version of the pack I'm using. I will also be attaching a cups canteen, which is this right here. Uh, it's a little cup that your bowl sits in. These come with pouches normally. Uh, you use these for you fill them with water and you cook your main meal in them, as well as you drink out of them. Uh, that's something I'll also be taking. And if you also want me to do a deep dive into a boo-boo kit, let me know in the comments, because I'd definitely be interested in doing that. Um, I'm not sponsored by Cadet Shop or Adrenaline in any way, shape or form. I really like their stuff, so obviously I'm going to recommend them. Uh, thank you for watching, and go touch grass and stop being a lazy shit. Uh, go to the gym and don't be chubby like me. See you in the next one.